let us open our Bible to the book of 2 Samuel 7. 2 Samuel 7. Yahweh needs no human help for himself. Yahweh needs no human help from him for himself. 2 Samuel 7 verses 1 to 5. David's intent to build the Yahweh's house. Let us read once again the first verse of this chapter. I could, after the king was settled in his palace, and Yahweh had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, and so forth, end of quote. So you see something wrong here? Do you see something wrong here? At what time does King David think of building a temple for Yahweh? Let us read the first of the two commandments Christ gave us. I quote, You shall love the you shall love Yahweh your God with all your hearts and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And a quote. This is Mark 12 verse 30. If our duty of humility is to put the interest of our neighbor before our own, our duty of love, it, to serve, to serve our neighbor, isn't it all the more so with the interest of Yahweh? When Yahweh released the Israelites from the hands of the Egyptians, what did he ask Moses at the desert to build the first? Yahweh asked Moses after the ark to build the tabernacle which was a portable dwelling place for divine presence. The temple or church building is different because it is fixed. Fixed. Davis is referred to as the king. The king. But when Yahweh refers to David, he calls him his servant. The question Yahweh asks David sets the tone for what is to follow. I quote, Are you the one who should build my house? And of quote. David, being at the rest in his place, considered how he might best employ his leisure and prosperity in the service of Yahweh. He formed a design to build a temple a temple for for the ark. Nathan here did not speak as a prophet but as a godly man encouraging David with his private judgment. We should do all we can to encourage and promote and and promote the good purposes and the designs of others and as we have opportunity to forward to forward a good work but in so doing uh, we have to inquire from Yahweh first first second Samuel 7 verses 6 to 17 this is I'm saying this inquire of Yahweh first even when you are uh, when you are uh, a prophet above all when you are prophet because you have always to ask from Yahweh because we have two answers here Nathan using his own understanding told the king who expressed uh, the, the will to build a temple for God he told him do as your heart tells you to do but after that God speaks to Nathan telling him go tell him He's not going to build my temple. So it doesn't work here. Nathan did not do. What a prophet does is when something happens like that, someone wants to do something, 
he will tell the person, let me go and inquire of Yahweh before I tell you uh, uh, what God wants you to do. So that's what I, uh, I wanted to, to say on this point. Second Samuel 7 verses 6 to 17, God's covenant with David, the Davidic covenant. Yahweh ordered Israel to build the tabernacle. The temple is David's idea. Yahweh explains that as the creator of all things, he neither requires nor can be confined in a dwelling made by human men, by human hands. hands. Clearly said, Yahweh does not need a temple and he does not ask for one. Yahweh reminds David who is taking care of whom. Yahweh gently rebukes then David for his heady plan. David has taken the wrong posture of helping out God rather than being the one who has constantly been helped by God, Yahweh. After listing all that he had done for David and Israel in the past, Yahweh goes on to tell David that he hasn't seen the best of ill. He hasn't seen the best of, of it yet. As David wanted to give him a dwelling place for his own, Yahweh promises to appoint a place for his people where they will be settled permanently. Blessings are promised to the family and posterity of David. These promises relate to Solomon or to Yahshua Christ, David's, Solomon David's immediate successor and the royal and the royal line of Judah. Yahweh announces that he is going to build a house for David by blessing his descendants. But the blessings also and most of all relate to Yahshua Christ who is often called David or the son of David. To him Yahweh gave all power in heaven and earth with authority to execute judgment. Yahshua the Messiah was to build the gospel temple, a house for Yahweh's name, the spiritual temple of true believers to be a habitation of God through the Holy Spirit. David could not build that spiritual heavenly temple for Yahweh said, I quote in verses 14, 13 and 14, uh, first, second Samuel uh, 7, 4, 13 and 14, I quote, He is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod welded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. The establishing of his house, his throne, and his kingdom forever can be applied to no other but Yahshua and his kingdom. Committing iniquity cannot be applied to the Messiah himself, but to his spiritual seed, which we are. True believers have infirmities for which they are expected to be corrected through, so, so, so they are not cast off. And Christ took the iniquities and infirmities of his followers and became for them the scapegoat, the, 
the atoning lamb who took upon himself all punishment and floggings inflicted by human hands up even to death, even to death. Second Samuel 7 verses 18 to 29, David's prayer and thanksgiving after these blessings. David's prayer is full of the breathings of devout affection toward Yahweh. He had low thoughts of his own merits. All we have must be looked upon as divine, as divine gifts. He speaks very highly and honorably of Yahweh's favors to him. He sees his standing and status of his, he speaks very highly and honorable, uh, honorably of Yahweh's favors to him. He sees his standing and status of his, Israel's king. God reminded him that this through the dating on uh, on uh, on, in, on verse, in verses 8 and 9 as the result of Yahweh's sovereign grace and not as the recognition of a potential greatness. Considering what the character and condition of man is, we may be amazed that Yahweh should deal with him as he does. The promise of Christ includes all. If Yahweh God be with us, what more can we ask or think of? As it is said in Ephesians 3 verse 2, verse 20. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Therefore, let us be satisfied with what he has done for us. What, what can we say more for ourselves in our prayers than Yahweh has said for us in his promises? David ascribes all that to the free grace of Yahweh. Both the great things he had done for him and the great things he had made known to him, all was for, for his words for Yahweh's word's sake, uh, that is, for the sake of Christ, the eternal word, word. Many, many when they go to pray, uh, have their hearts wandering. Uh, but David's heart was found, that is, it was fixed, gathered in from its wanderings, entirely engaged to the jury, and uh, employed in it that our prayer which is from the tongue only will not please Yahweh it has to be found in the heart with it has to be found in the heart which must be lifted up and poured out before Yahweh David builds his faith and hopes to speed upon the sureness of Yahweh's promise. He prays, he prays for the performance of the promise. With Yahweh saying and doing are uh, two things, and as they often are with men, Yahweh will do as he had said. The promises of Yahweh are not made to us by, by name as to David, but they belong to all who believe in Yahshua, the Christ, and plead them in his name. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father Yahweh, I am not worthy of making personal gifts to you. Only tell me what to do and I will be blessed. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, that means I will pray. I will encourage 
and promote the good purposes of others only under Yahweh's instructions. In the name of Yeshua, I will engage into endeavors only sustained by the will of God. In the name of Yeshua, I will always avoid the posture of pretending to help God out. In the name of Yeshua, Father Yahweh, bless me and my family in the order of David, in the name of Yeshua. Father, because your sovereign grace to me is not a recognition of my potential greatness, I thank you for your promises in the name of Yeshua. Father Yahweh, my faith and hopes are built. I built upon the sureness of your promises in the name of Yeshua. Because you always do what you say, Father Yahweh, I have rest in peace with my hope laid on you. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.